Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is David Novak. I thought that I would do a reading update just to report on my progress with the various books that I'm reading. Uh, at least outwardly, there has not been much progress, meaning that I have not finished anything for quite a while. I have four books currently going. I will show you what they are. Uh, Ancient Iraq by Georges Roux. Uh, the Administration of Thomas Jefferson by Henry Adams. First volume of a two-volume set. Second volume covers the administration of Madison. No other book. A compilation of literary criticism and such like by Randall Jarrell. And then my main focus right now, the journey to the West. I can get Randall Jarrell out of the way pretty easily. Um, I, it's an easy sort of thing for me to dip into. I haven't read any poetry criticism for a long time. And I like his criticism. Uh, his writing is uneven, I would say. Not so much uneven, but my interest level in what he writes about is very uneven. And in my community posts, I've been uh, pasting little excerpts of a paragraph here or there from this book that intrigue me or interest me or that I find resonate with me very well. An awful lot of the book does not. Um, if he's writing about Robert Frost, a, a poet that I like, then I, I find I'm more with him. And if he's writing about a poet that I am uh, not so fond of, then I am not with him. Uh, but it's it's a good thing after a long day, I can just dip in for a, a few pages and uh, derive a lot of pleasure out of Randall Jarrell. I really love this book, but it's getting the short end right now uh, because I'm kind of putting myself on a deadline with the journey to the West, and that's uh, partly what I want to talk about. Um, I would really love to be able to devote a lot more time to this one, and uh, when you're reading multiple volumes at one time, uh, it allows you a little bit of wiggle room if you want to emphasize one particular book, then you have to de-emphasize another one, unless you do not have to sleep at night like certain booktubers. Um, it's a book that, uh, if I could put in a good solid hour every day, I would be real happy with the progress as it is, if I can, I just put in a couple of pages now. Now, uh, before I started Journey to the West, that was not an issue. I was uh, reading this more heavily, uh, and and the story with the story with the Henry Adams book is that I do it for twenty minutes every evening. One of the last things before I go to sleep, whilst doing a stretching exercise, and so that's. That's sort of irrevocable. I, I've missed a day or two, and I, I let that go. But it's it's going to take me a uh, year to finish the two volumes. Uh, I probably know enough about Thomas Jefferson uh, as far as satisfying my own personal curiosity. I don't feel like I need to know more about him. Although reading uh, the story of his uh, I'm still uh, in his first administration. Uh, reading the story about his administration, uh, his first term, I am finding myself very intrigued by the character of Madison, who is his uh, Secretary of State. And so I do look forward to the next volume in the set. Uh, 
Initially, this month, I had been planning to read Huckleberry Finn, and uh, that was to have been a buddy read, and my partner in that endeavor pulled out. And so I pulled out as well and decided to take this up. I, I posted a video about reading mammoths, and I would like to read mammoth novels. Particularly, I would knock, like to knock out my uh, Chinese novels. I, that's not a goal for this year or anything like that, but I decided to do this. It, it's, it, it's in four volumes, about this length, a hundred chapters. And I decided to just try to knock it out before next month, uh, which is April, uh, at which time a group of people, actually multiple groups of people, are planning to start reading Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. And I want to join that group or those groups. And in order to do that, I have to push on this. And uh, I started some several days into the month, and then it was real slow going for the first couple of chapters. And I calculated the book has 100 chapters total, which is not uncommon for these Chinese novels. And I determined that I would need to complete four chapters per day in order to finish at the end of the month, uh, a couple days before the end of the month, but I figured that will allow me to slip here or there, possibly even miss a day. Well, today was the first day since I started doing that that I failed in that goal. I had personal activities which uh, appealed to me more, and so I was out, and I only managed to get three chapters in. Uh, I easily could have just left it at two, but given this goal that I'm working toward, I pushed myself, and I also pushed myself because I completed chapter 34. So that puts me past the one-third mark of this book. And the topic that really has been playing in my mind is reading books that you don't particularly like. And when it comes to this, I have to qualify that. Um, Grix at Grix, etc. is about the only booktuber that I can think of that talks about reading books for other reasons than just pleasure. And a fair amount of my reading, since I have become a dedicated reader, has been books which I am not entirely enthralled or enamored with. So my story is that for most of my life, I was not much of a reader. I did read, uh, but I mainly read things that I was interested in for a purpose or things that I really enjoyed. And the surprising thing to come out of two years dedicating myself to reading uh, I read at least an hour a day. I try to read more than that if I can. Is the no the idea that um, the thing to come out of that experience, which has surprised me, has been that more books than I expected are books that I have a dislike for to a degree. For me, it's never 100% all the way. Uh, in the past, I could make a very quick, facile judgment on a book and set it aside. Now I'm not doing that. And for the most part, I'm trying to read through to conclusion any book that I start. And so if it's a book like, um, I read one by Jean Larticay, uh, a, a, a novel set in Vietnam, I think it was. It was the most atrocious book that I've read in uh, a couple of years, and I read it through all the way. And uh, I still think uh, possibly I got some some enlightenment out of that experience. It's the kind of book that in the past I, I wouldn't have gotten past uh, several pages with, but I just decided to go through. Um, but where the issue becomes more pronounced for me is when you're talking about a 
a book that's longer. Now, last year, I think it was, I read this. This is a nonfiction work, and I can't really say that I liked it. Uh, it's a book, uh, there are three volumes of this size. It's uh, subdivided into seven books. Um, it's a book that I am glad having read, but I don't know if that is justification enough for plowing through a book that you don't especially like. I, I really appreciate all of the knowledge that I've accrued about the gulag system. Um, I don't I don't know how much I felt that I gelled with Solzhenitsyn's personality. Um, perhaps if he had been a more sympathetic narrator to me, I would have um, fallen in with it more. But um, so when I'm talking about reading things that I don't particularly like, um, I'm referring both to fiction and nonfiction. Um, year before that, I'm just holding this up as a placeholder. I read The Arabian Nights, uh, which Penguin publishes in a three-volume set. Uh, each, each volume is bigger than that uh, gulag, which I just showed you. Um, so that perfectly fits the topic of what's playing in my mind because this book is kind of similar to that in that it's kind of a little bit something of a really stupid book. Um, the story is like uh, the worst that you can imagine in a sort of kung fu fantasy with uh, all kinds of goblins and transformations and um, but saying that, it's, it's not a waste of time, and, and I am deriving some pleasure out of it. It's not that I, I hate the book every minute. Uh, I would rather not be pressing it so hard as I am doing this month, but it's, it's a choice that I felt I had to make because I don't want to leave this one uh, midway and, and then plunge into another mammoth undertaking. Now let, let's see if I can read you a little bit just to give you a sense of, of, of this. Well, I'm not sure where's a good place to start. Pilgrim is, is how the, the monkey king is referred to. A secretly delighted pilgrim said to himself, this lawless monster does manage to withstand the iron rod of old monkey but I have already acquired three of his treasures. If I continue to fight bitterly like this with him, won't it just delay what I want to do? Perhaps I should use the gourd or the pure vase to store him up. Those, those are magical treasures formerly in possession of the, 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 the demon or whatever it is, the monster. They're called monsters in here. He then thought further, no good, no good. The proverb says, each thing has its master. If I call him and he doesn't answer, it will just defeat my purpose. Let me use the yellow gold rope to lasso his head. Dear great sage, he used one hand to wield his iron rod while his other hand whipped out the rope and lassoed the demon's head. Excuse me. <coughs> The demon, however, knew a tight rope spell and a loose rope spell. If the rope had bound another person, he would recite the tight rope spell, and that person would not be able to escape. But if the rope had been fastened on one of his own, he would recite the loose rope spell, and no harm would come to the person. When he saw, then, that it was his own treasure, he recited at once the loose rope spell, the rope loosened itself, and he came out of the noose. Taking the rope, he threw it at Pilgrim instead, and it caught hold of the great sage instantly. 
the great sage was about to exercise his magic of thinning the body when the demon recited the tight rope spell and it had him firmly bound. It was impossible for him to escape for when the rope was drawn down to his neck, one end of it changed into a gold ring tightly enclosing him. The fiend then gave the rope a tug and pulled Pilgrim down before he gave that bald head seven or eight blows with the sword. The skin on Pilgrim's head did not even redden at all. Pilgrim is somewhat invincible, kind of a Superman character, and the bald head refers to his having... Uh, left home, as they say, or become a monk. But I, I think you get a picture of that from that scene. And the book is replete with such encounters, all of these fight scenes. Um, in the day before cinema, it must have been delightful to the reader. Uh, even in the cinema, I find that kind of thing sort of uh, boring. But reading this book, you realize that... Um, what was it, Ang Lee with Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That movie was such a tremendous success and had such an influence. You realize that there was nothing in that movie that uh, was not accomplished previously in literature. And of course, now movies have all gone in that sort of uh, direction. Uh, perhaps film is a better vehicle for that sort of thing. Um, and so I'm a third of the way through 34 chapters into 100 of that kind of stuff. A lot of melees, I, I, I think, if that's how you pronounce that word. Um, and the, the absolute worst scene came just in the previous chapter, I think 33, uh, which was something like, from an old Abbott and Costello movie. Uh, if you remember, there'd be some kind of haunted house or something, some room, and there's some danger. Maybe maybe the, the mummy is in there or something. And Abbott would push Lou to go in. Lou, go in, go in. And, and Lou would be, <laughs> whatever, all that uh, stupid stuff. I can't imagine that I would take pleasure out of it now. But I did when I was a boy watching it. And it was a scene pretty much like that. Uh, the, the monkey decided to push one of the, the disciples, a junior to him, uh, on their quest to check out the mountain uh, for no reason other than setting up this scene. Uh, because... There was no reason for them to send him out alone into this spooky territory, but he did. And then, to top it all off, uh, Monkey decided to transform himself first into, I forget, a, a fly or something, and then into a, a, a woodpecker. And so the, the junior disciple um, decided instead of uh, dealing with checking out the area, he would just cozy up somewhere and take a nap and then come back and report. And so he, re I, th I think previously he had done so and he rehearsed everything that he would say to them. Of course, uh, he had to talk out loud and uh, now I've got my scenes possibly confused. Uh, it might be this one. And, and, the monkey is with him, so he hears it. So he had to say it out loud just so the monkey could overhear it. And then the monkey has transformed himself into a woodpecker. And so he goes and he pecks him on the lip. And then he pecks him somewhere else. And the guy's getting really scared. And uh, it's all just pretty stupid. And then and then uh, monkey goes back and then, and then the guy comes back and they, they all know exactly what he's going to say because he rehearsed it all out. Um, and this is leading to a scene where uh, this guy is, of course, going to meet with the uh, real monster. So I don't know what you call this sort of thing, burlesque. Uh, 
it, it really is reminiscent of those old Abbott and Costello movies. And, and so I found myself groaning throughout that chapter. Now, that was the, the worst one so far. And some of it's better than that. Uh, there have been two parts in the book that I absolutely loved. Um, now, the first, I think, seven chapters or so are sort of the superhero origin story of the monkey. And it's delightful, uh, really enjoyable. Uh, then you get to the journey. Uh, this, this really is sort of a prototype to every Hollywood movie you can imagine. Uh, a, 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 it, it reminds me most of like a heist movie. You bring these disparate experts together who really all seem like idiots, but you know, you'll have the computer genius who's really an idiot. And so you've got all these guys who are, they've taken vows, they're all together, and they're all kind of idiots too. And the camaraderie, the, the foibles, the interactions, the uh, cursing and so forth amongst them is what uh, makes for the, the, the tone of the book, the, the, the climate of the book, the culture of the book. Um, but that said, it is not without its insight into humanity. Um, these, these, uh, you've got a monk who is, um, what does it, what does it, it refers to this monk as Namby Pamby. He is the most Namby Pamby figure you could ever imagine. The hero really is the monkey, and all of the other uh, disciples or or uh, other vow takers accompanying him are pretty wishy washy uh, themselves. Uh, uh, now I now I don't know where I was going with that thought, but uh, so the book is not without its insight into humanity. And one of those moments that I really liked uh, came at the stopping of our troop at a, a monastery uh, or, or a, a temple um, to spend the night, uh, get a meal. And the head of this monastery covets something, uh, a possession uh, that they are carrying. And what ensues is all, it, it's, 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 it's a mixture of sweet and uh, hilarious and sad, really, bittersweet, I guess. Um, it was just very touching in its way, uh, in that it shows the fallibility of humans. Oh, that's what I was going to say. All of these, these uh, disciples or, or uh, brothers, whatever, uh, traveling with uh, th this Namby Pamby guy, they are all animals, but it's really a territory where it's between animals and people. So, you know, like, uh, yeah, you almost have an X-Man X-Men sort of environment. Who was it? Nightcrawler, who was looked like an animal with a tail. Um, but still, so so you've got the play both ways. Uh, they can be animal-like and they can be human. And so it's it's got its delightful aspect to it. I would rather be taking it more slowly. Um, Somewhere in a comment on a, a post that he made, uh, Brian at Bookish mentioned his experience with the book Don Quixote, which he started, got about a hundred pages into, and he said, it seemed to me like it was one long joke over and over, and I didn't find it so funny, so I DNF'd it, DNF being booktube ease for not finishing a book. And the, the parallels between uh, Don Quixote and Sancho, or Sancho Panza, are 
are obvious and striking in this book. Uh, th th these works were created independently, um, but you really have a, a monkey and a, a master, so to speak. Uh, in, in Don Quixote, I believe Don Quixote was the more interesting figure of the two. And in this book, the monkey is the more interesting figure of the two. But it's kind of a similar dynamic and kind of the same idea of one joke, although it's really not a joke in the way Don Quixote was. It's not nearly so funny, but one premise, basically. Uh, now, my experience with Don Quixote was different. I, it's, it's in two parts, and I loved the first part, which was a complete work in itself. It was one long joke, possibly, but I found that it worked quite well. And then when it ended, it ended. But the author had such success with it, and somebody pirated the idea and put out a sequel or something. So he decided to write his own sequel. And the sequel was uh, done after the idea had been used. The idea was over with. And so he tried to compensate with one or two other ideas and trying to restore that, that old idea. I suppose sort of like Sherlock Holmes coming back to life after going over the falls. Uh, Don Quixote uh, came back to insanity after what whatever happened. I don't I don't remember the book any longer. But that that first half of Don Quixote I found funny and it carried me through. Today I might think differently. I was fairly young at the time. Uh, this one uh, I could easily see advising somebody if you want to take it, commit yourself to the origin story of the monkey, which is the the first seven or whatever chapters. There's a good introduction, and he he tells you, uh, Anthony C.U. tells you all about what to expect. It, the, the introduction was hard reading for me, but it's it's very well done. I, I would advise somebody, commit yourself to the, to the origin story of the monkey, and then decide whether you want to go on or not. It's, it's definitely a work that is worth uh, having some familiarity with. Uh, but I rue the fact that uh, I am not reading uh, more of this. This this is has really been speaking to me, and I would like to. And as I say, the the, the whole idea of reading things that you don't like has been a big surprise for me in this whole project of trying to build my reading. Now, somebody who's, say, a book reviewer is going to be doing that on a daily basis. It's a job. And so what is the reason, what is the justification for somebody like me to do so? And I don't have a good answer. The best I can come up with is that it's uh, uh, touching base with humanity. Um, the journey to the West um, is a touchstone in uh, Chinese literary culture. There's no getting around that. Um, uh, it's based on factual happenings, but not really, uh, because uh, a monk went to the West and brought Buddhist scriptures to China. And I, I, I don't know if, if Buddhism had already percolated into China and he just brought the scriptures, or uh, if he had brought the scriptures and brought Buddhism. I, I mean, that, that was my impression of, of it before. But this book is a fantasy novel. And as such, everything is turned on its head. So the, the emperor at the time is a really good guy. And he commissions this monk to go and get all these important scriptures. Of course, the guy... In, in actuality, so far as we know, took it upon himself, went on his own without permission of the emperor to leave the country. And when he came back, came back uh, under the onus of a, a death sentence, but he, he, he got a, a pardon 
from the emperor, but that's the reality of what happened. And so this turns historical fact on its ear, so to speak. And I halfway wonder if this uh, was not the Taoist revenge against Buddhism for coming into China, um, that they just wanted to make the whole uh, practice a little bit ridiculous. Uh, Taoism, to the extent that it is a religion, is somewhat mumbo-jumbo laden and ridiculous in its own way. Uh, and, uh, and I love the philosophy of Taoism. Uh, but if you've, if you've ever been to a uh, ceremony at, at the temple uh, with the, the, the various spitting of water and all kinds of stuff and chanting and casting spells. I mean, it, casting spells is a big part of Taoism. And uh, you, 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 you would want to step back from it a little bit. So I, I just, that's how I wonder. Uh, it's a delightful romp, regardless, uh, but I find it tedious as well. And so I have both of those twin reactions occurring simultaneously. Sometimes it's more one and sometimes it's more the other. Uh, and what it has going for it, I suppose, is that if you're going to read fantasy, and I have never been a reader of fantasy, uh, you should read the best. And this has staying power of 400 years or whatever. Uh, it's not a genre that appeals to me. And I had a real hard time when I was reading The Arabian Nights as well. That was another book where I, I set myself up a certain amount of, uh, a number of pages that I had to read every day and just force myself through it because it's, uh, this, this is less tedious than that. That was probably the most tedious and the most juvenile and childish book uh, that I've ever read. Uh, I'm, I'm exaggerating, uh, but it's, it's three, three volumes like that in Penguin, a, a long thing. And am I glad that I read it? You better believe that I am. Um, it was a hard, tough slog, uh, but the, the little uh, selections um, uh, translated by Cohen that Penguin put out that I read many years ago when I was quite young, does not give you a sense of the scope of that book. And I wish in that book that I had taken notes. I don't annotate my books. There too, there were parts that were just lovely and wonderful. And you would come across something that was just so fantastic and you'd never come to something like that again. The book is so multifold and various. Um, and I will, I will not read it again, I'm sure. And I wish I had uh, taken notes for those good parts. But I think with a book like that and with a book like this and even possibly with something like Don Quixote, it's, it's not bad to take the thing as a whole. Uh, I never really like when you get one of these omnibus editions or whatever and they give you excerpts from Ex somebody somebody on booktube was recently laughing about that excerpts from a novel what do i want with excerpts from a novel and i wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment um you know when i was young the first thing i did uh, when i became an adult and had my own apartment uh in chicago was to sign up for voice lessons. Because when I was young, I had wanted to learn about singing. And I didn't know what to do. And I wound up uh, taking voice lessons from Blanche Lewis, who was a vocal coach for operatic singing. Uh, my reasoning at the time was possibly flawed, but I thought, well, if I'm going to learn to sing, I might as well learn 
the best. Uh, that's That was the uh, misconception that I was operating under. I, I today would not say that opera singing is the best. Uh, there are <laughs> a lot of varieties of singing. Um, uh, I might as well have said I, I should learn throat singing because that is the best. There, there, there's so much under the sun when it comes to singing. But so I, I, I looked for opera voice teachers and found Blanche. And that led to a multi-year association, which uh, had me um, volunteering for the opera. I, 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 I worked at different operas. Um, even when it was possible, I would get paid. So I, I, I worked at um, Chicago Opera Theater, those, though I was always the last minute fill-in guy. So I don't believe I, I was ever mentioned in a program. But I, I, for a couple of years, I worked every show. And um, and even there, we had a small opera company, Lincoln Opera, but, but I did a lot with the Opera Factory, which was Blanche's group. And then that led into some little stage managing outside of that. And then that led me into becoming a playwright and the idea of drama with music sort of fell to the wayside for me and I went straight ahead in writing plays. Uh, but if I had not operated under that misconception and had just, say, uh, been less choosy about a uh, vocal instructor, um, this whole path that I wound up going down would not have opened itself up to me. And so, uh, to some degree, I think that's, that's what, at best, I would hope for, for pursuing something like this. Uh, if you're, if you're going to read a hokey fantasy story, uh, why not go for something that has stood the test of time and has um, a lot of gravitas to it? Uh, that's a, a, a horrible word to put to this book. But so that shows where I am now. And if you have any thoughts about reading things that you don't like, um, I would like to hear them. Um, if you're a booktuber, I would like to hear a video about that. I just um, find the topic interesting because I did not expect that that's where I would be going with reading. Um, as I say, even even this thing, it's it's not something that I really particularly like. This one I can excuse because it's just 20 minutes a day. And at the end of the year, I will have read something, but I don't know that I will uh, in the future pick up um, United States of America history. I, I still think that I will uh, try to do the, the uh, antecedent to that, the Parkman uh, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, another huge two-volume set um, comprising, I think, seven books uh, by Francis Parkman about the uh, history of the North American continent and a, a lot to do with Europeans vying for uh, supremacy over one another. And I think that's something that would be worthwhile, uh, my knowing. Uh, learning about... Uh, Thomas Jefferson and uh, James Madison may not be uh, so much in my wheelhouse, so to speak. But again, it, it, it's only 20 minutes. The year is going to pass regardless, unless it doesn't. And at the end of it, I'll come out knowing a little something. So I will leave that there. Thank you very much for stopping by my channel.